I don't know how to be any clearer, but M Miss Harrison is out walking. I'll Can wait. Oh, sir, this is so unusual. I... Kelsey, I have to talk to you. Then I hope you like the sound of your own voice, because I don't have anything to say to you. Tommy was feeling a little restless. I thought if we both talked Frank, to him... I think he might have done something drastic this time. W what do you mean, drastic? Well, I just heard that, disguising his voice, he requested an ambulance for Dean Frame. You want to run that by me again, I.W.? Well, why don't we just see what he's got to say for himself? Yeah. He doesn't go to bed before 10, no matter how bad he feels. Tom? Tommy? Tom! Now what? Uh, ah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw this thing on my foot. Okay, great. Carrie, you can get that ambulance back to the hospital right away, okay? Thanks. So Tommy doesn't get in trouble. Thank you. Bye. I don't believe we got here in an ambulance. Do you believe oh, honey, I owe that kid big. Big time. I know. I owe him. He's I mean, wonderful. I don't know how I'm going to pay him back. He's a great guy. Backstage pass? Tommy, Tommy what? Tommy, what are you... Tell Brain on my parade, okay? Let's rock and roll! Find out anything? Yeah, I did. What, did you find Olivia? You find mm -hmm. the baby? No, what? Sorry. But you were right about the father. What, Russ Matthews knows where she is? Yeah. Damn, that guy he lied to me. I can't Look, Russ isn't talking, but I got the feeling that there's nothing wrong with Olivia or the baby. Well, how do you know that? After I spoke with Russ, well, it seems that Olivia's cut him out, too. Probably drove her crazy and she split town, right? Seems like she's doing a lot of that. Well, yeah, but that's gonna stop. And soon. Listen, I can keep looking for her, but if she's out of the country, my contacts, they only go so far. No, just, just, let's, I'll handle it from here, all right, right? You just send me a bill for your time and I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Listen, Dennis, I, I don't want to sound like a pessimist, but, uh, this seems to be like one of those cases where unless the mother comes forward with some information, your hands could be tied indefinitely. I wouldn't be so sure about that. I don't care what Russ Matthews or anybody else thinks. I'm going to find my baby. This child's going to know who his father is. Oh, Please don't be mad at me, you guys. I had to be here. Tommy, you could get in a lot of trouble for doing this. Do you realize that? It's my middle name most days. It's not funny, Tom. I mean, you're, you're supposed to be under doctor supervision. That's don't you right. think that we're going to feel responsible for you? man, you got to cut me some slack. This is my best day. I don't know how long. My blood count did 180 this morning. And Dr. Hudson and Dr. Beckett were practically doing cartwheels. Well, they're going to do cartwheels on our heads when they realize that you're missing. Look, I promise I'll go right back after the last stone car is over. Don't make me beg. It won't be pretty. Honey, I got to call the hospital. I know, I know, you're right. right. Don't act like I'm not here, okay? Call the stupid hospital if you want. they will just give you orders. What does it do to me? I'm sick of it. You know, the doctors and nurses, they only want to do what's best for you. Yeah? Yeah. Tell me what difference this is going to make in the big picture, Jenna. All right, uh, look, I'm, I am going to call a hospital, but I'm going to see what I can do, all right? Thanks, Tim. Hey, where were you guys? I was getting worried. Oh, my car broke down, and we, we couldn't get all the equipment in a taxi, and I called everybody I could think of to get a ride. Everyone was here. So what'd you do? Oh, uh, we called on our guardian angel. Yeah. Mother Superior, Matt, this is Tommy Kent. He's our... Road manager. Nice to meet you, Mother S. So where do we set up? I really wish you hadn't come here today, Jamie. Kelsey, I've been looking everywhere for you. Isn't it a little late for that now? I don't think so. Look, I really don't have it in me to sit here and listen to you explain the whys of calling Charlie Hunter to testify at the hearing. You have to know, I never would have allowed Cass to do that. How would he have known if you didn't tell him? Because he put two and two together by himself. Oh, please. He did. 
He heard you mention things about your past. You yourself said things to Cass about what happened to you in college. Oh, and out of all the professors that I had in college and med school, he just happened to pull the one I slept with out of a hat? He had a PI working on the case. Oh, right, without your knowledge. That's true. Oh, that is the biggest bunch of horse manure I've heard in a long time. Chelsea, don't you know me better than that? Don't you know who I am at all? I thought I did. If I hadn't, I never would have opened up my life to you the way that I did in our bed so you could use it against me at the hearing. In our bed, Jamie. There's nothing more to say. There's nothing new to say. Don't you do this to me! Kelsey, there is something new. That's why I'm here. I just found out that Jake had set us up from the very beginning. What? Do you remember how we totally disagreed about which one of us made the first move the day we first made love? Jake had written me the note to come over and see you, and he had written you the note that was from me. That's why neither one of us could figure out what the other one was talking about when we finally tried to remember how we came together in the first place. Oh, for crying out loud, Jamie, what difference does it make? In the end, we, ch we chose to be together. I, I mean, if Jake sped up the process, who cares? You and I went into this with our eyes open and you know it. Because don't you see what I'm trying to say? I see you looking for excuses. No! I am trying to show you how many people have gotten in the middle of our lives. Jake, your uncle, Cass, for going over my head with evidence about the hearing. All of them have been stepping all over us to get what they think is right for themselves or for us. But no one bothered to talk to you or me to see what we think. What do you want from me, Jamie? One last chance. For you? No, damn it, for us. Kelsey, we owe it to ourselves. We owe it to what we had to finally understand the truth. Whose truth are we talking about, Jamie? Mine. Please come with me. You want me to come with you? Please, you... trust me this one last time. I know that you feel you've been burnt trusting me before, and this is the last time I will ask you. If you don't know who I am by the end of today, we're over, and I will never bother you again. I promise you. Kelsey, please. Anything? No. You? No. All anybody knows is that there's an ambulance missing. Oh. Nobody saw him leave his room. The floor nurse said he was reading in his bed an hour ago. Little devil, just wait till I get my hands on him. Now, if I get my hands on him first. You think this is one of his famous practical jokes? Oh, goodness, I don't know. I just don't understand what Dean Frame is... Oh, my goodness. What, do you think of something? Yes, I did. I know exactly where he is. Well, where, for crying out loud? Dean Frame has a concert tonight, right? Are you serious? Oh, of course I am. Tommy has commandeered an ambulance to go to the Convent of the Sacred Heart. Sick, that's over an hour out of town. Well, just think about it, Hank. If you were a little boy, if you hated rules and you knew where your favorite singer was performing yeah, tonight... Yeah, I'd hijack you'd... an ambulance, too. Come on, let's get out there before he starts Oh, listen, back. do you think we'd better take a doctor? I mean, just in case. No, I talked to John. His counts are better. That's why I filled up the doing this in the first place. Well, he's better. That's one. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, you, the one with the buzz cut. Take down those wires. I don't want my client tripping over those in the middle of a song. Thanks, man. No problem, Jenna. Thanks, Tommy. How's it looking out there? Well, we've got time before the doors open. You're kidding, right? Please, don't, don't, don't tell me that there's no one out there, okay? No one would be a lie, but... But what? There aren't enough bodies to fill the seats yet, Jenna. <sighs> it's still early, Jenna, dear. I know, but remember you said the advance ticket sales weren't going very fast? Yes. So? Have faith. Dean is going to be demoralized if no one shows. Have faith. I've got a rosary yet to say. Where is Dean, by the way? He's trying to reach the hospital. The hospital? Yeah. Uh, oh, for our uh, road manager over there. He's ill? Yeah. Very sick, actually. He really shouldn't be out of the hospital. He snuck out in a box because he wanted to hear Dean sing. Oh, my. We didn't, we didn't even know that he snuck out until the ride took off. Oh, good heavens. But, but look at him, though. He's glowing. 
Yeah, I know. He's a fantastic kid. And Dean really cares about him. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. I called John. Yeah, was he furious? Well, he's less than thrilled, but he said that as long as he's happy, he can stay for a while. Oh, so. that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. And the thing is, we've got to get him back right after the show. Okay. okay. But apparently, his father's really worried about him. Well, I hope somebody told him that Tommy is in good hands. Oh, yeah, yeah. I told him Jenna would keep an eye on him through the whole show. Yeah, of course. Okay, good. Okay. The thing is, if, if you see anything, you know, anything weird, if he, if he looks like he's tired or something, just call John right away, okay? Right. I told him you would. I will drive him back to Bay City if there's a problem, Dean. Oh, great. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, you with the Tom Tom. Watch where you're going. It's my main man. <laughs> All right, honey. So we 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 work that uh, crisis out. How about the next crisis? What's going on? What are you wishing a crisis on us? No, no. I was, I was just backstage, though. Uh, you might want to hear this. And then Matt said there's nobody in the parking lot. It's just dead. Oh, Dean. Uh, 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 we have time. It's still early. Yeah, we haven't lit the candles yet, mm. so there's there's nothing to worry about. Okay, now I'm gonna see Good. what I can find out and. Uh, you don't seem worried at all. Worried? No, I'm not worried. Hey, I got convent coverage, baby. I'm, <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> Tommy! Good. Yeah, boss. Busy. Listen to me, man. I need you to keep cracking on everybody, all right? Keep the whip cracking. I want to get up there on time. Right on time. I don't want to be late. Got it. All right? Good boy. Hey, you! Where's the set list for the back of the truck kick? Oh, please. Please let it be somebody that I like. Someone that's important to me. Uh, oh! Hey! Coming true. Yeah, yeah. How you doing, Steve? Thanks for being here. Thanks. Oh. I really, I need it. And hey, you know, this place is out in the middle of nowhere. Please tell me about it. I hope that more than just you two can find the place. I'm a little worried about that. Oh, there were people coming in when we were. There were? Yeah. Lots. How many cats? Oh wow, uh, five or six. Five or six people. Cars. Cars. Yeah. Well, that'll be fine. I'm not. I'm not worried. Oh, you no, no, no. I got my friends. Yeah. I got my family. Yeah. I got my band. Yeah. I got the guys. I got. I got my girl. I'm hey. got a convent full of nuns. What? I got a convent full what? of nuns. What? What? I would be greedy if I asked more than that. Right? Yeah. There's a pretty good band playing here tonight. Yeah? You hear that? Yeah. I like them. <laughs> you came to hear you play. We wanted to wish you good luck. No, Sam. Yeah, that means a lot to me. Thank you. Unless, of course, you're planning on playing out in the parking lot during intermission. No, no, no. I don't do outdoor venues. You don't? No. Okay, then. Not yet, you know. Not yet. All right. <laughs> We're really glad you joined us, Dean. Well, thank you. That, that means a lot. Hi. How are you guys? Good. Hey, guys, thanks for coming. Wow, this seems a lot to... Right. Dean, yes, Dean, yes. we've got five minutes before we open the door. Oh, okay. Oh, we better get our seats. Yeah, well, we still can. Yes, hey. they're going like hotcakes. Do you hear that? Listen, listen. They're starting already. Yeah. I'm afraid that cheering isn't for Dean. Oh, what's what it for? Well, it's Father Johnson's bingo night next door. Oh. He's being out cheered by a bingo game? Be quiet, Cass, or I'll take you home. Huh? All right, check the lights, Steve. Yeah. Everything's okay. Well, great, man. Good Thank going. You. I okay. It. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Tommy. Yeah. Okay. Tommy. 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 I want you to. I want you guys. You gotta help me pull this curtain before anybody else gets in here. Okay? Together. But you pull one side. Pull the other. Wishes like a man. All right. On three. Yeah. Huh? Ready? One, two, three. three. Whoa! I want to talk to you. I didn't hear anybody invite you in here. You Dad. lied to me. You lied to me about my baby. Get out of this house. Oh, first you accuse me of abandoning Olivia and my child. I ask you about it. I confront you, and you act like you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Well, given this display of lousy temper, I'm damn glad I did. Well, Russ, perhaps you should. Oh, Liz, now, you, please, you stay out of this. I'm warning. Listen to me. Do you have any idea what this feels like? Do you? I am concerned about the feelings of my daughter and grandchild. Your feelings don't even come into it. Oh, yeah? Well, I know more about you than you think, Russ. What, what is that supposed to mean? It means I know that the same thing happened to you that you're putting me through right now. It's a lousy position to be in, isn't it, Russ? No, no. Our situations are totally different. Really? 
I don't think so. Russ, perhaps it will help everyone, including Olivia, if Dennis knows. I'm going to find my baby, Russ. I hired a private investigator, and I'm going to find her. You are having my daughter followed? That's right. If I can find her, I'm going to have her followed. Didn't it ever occur to you that Olivia's choice to keep you away from that child ought to be respected? No, no, it did not. Not in this situation, because I didn't do anything wrong. Well, you took advantage of a young woman on the rebound. You got her pregnant. From... What, are you, what, are you kidding me? The only reason she told me in the first place is because she thought that I was dying. Isn't that right, Liz? What, what is he talking about? Uh, Olivia uh, let Sam think that the baby was his. Dennis had a car accident, and she decided that if he knew he was going to be a father, he might fight harder to pull through. Dennis didn't know anything until a few weeks before Olivia left Bay City. Look, Russ, I know you're trying to protect Olivia and the baby, and I, and I don't blame you. But as soon as I found out that she was pregnant with my child, I've done nothing but trying to help her out and do the right thing. I even, I even offered to marry her. And what did she do? She up and she left without, without explanation or a forwarding address or anything. And on August 15th, when she was supposed to give birth to a child, our child, I sat there and I wondered. I wondered if I was going to become a father. From that day on, that's all that I think about. I, I don't want to hurt her. And I certainly don't want to hurt the baby, but I want to be a part of this child's life, Russ. I'm asking you to understand. Understand me and help me out here. I, I can't do it, Dennis. Now, I won't go against Olivia's wishes. She did it to you, too, didn't she? She, she tried to let you in, and then you tried to tell her how to run her life, and, then, and now she's gone. You, since you couldn't be involved with her life, you didn't want anybody to be involved with her. It's just, it's just, it's just a waste. It's for all of us. He's right. In the end, is anyone involved going to be happy? should be. I think you're wrong. Look, I, I need to say something before we do anything else. Okay. If you think that I'm going to stand here and listen to you reenact the hearing the right way in your mind, I am out of here before we even start. What I want to do is finish what we started in here. No lawyers, no board members, no surprise witnesses. Kelsey, I want us to be able to say everything that we really feel without being afraid how it's going to be heard. So, if you tell me the real truth, here, alone, you get to clear your conscience and your record and mine just stay the same? That's not what I meant at all. Then I don't have a bloody clue what we're doing here, Jamie. Listen to me. Jake has tied us both into knots. Maybe if we really work at it here, we can undo them. I don't know if that's possible. Well, we have to try. Looking for a scapegoat in Jake or but anyone else. I am else. not doing that. Of course you I'm are. I'm here, aren't I? Say anything you want to say to me. Ask me anything. Say anything that you wanted to say but haven't been able to do that before. Look, it is just us in here. If you don't want it to leave this room, it never will. Yeah, well, I thought that about our bedroom, and look what happened there. That's not fair. I never told anyone about your relationship with Professor Hunter. Even when Cass had finally figured it out for himself, I told him to drop it. I told him that Jake was the oh, one... Oh, Jake, please forget about Jake, would you? How can I when everything he's done to screw us has come back to haunt what us? What difference does it make if he set us up? What? Nothing. It means nothing. I was drawn to you from the very beginning. And none of Jake's games lessened or strengthened what we have. What I'm trying to say 
is that without Jake's interference, neither of us would have let the problems take us down this far. Oh, Bull. You want honesty. You just bought yourself a truckload. So let's see now if you can give as good as you get. I think I'm trying to use Jake as an excuse for what happened between us. But Kelsey, you have to admit, if Jake never made that videotape of us, we never would have come to this point. I'll admit that. It might have been worse. How could it be worse? I might never have found out the truth about you, Jamie. That's why I brought you here. I want to show you what the truth is. I don't need a refresher course. No, what you need is a whole new damn attitude. Oh, this was a mistake. Kelsey! Please, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm saying things I don't mean because I'm desperate. Jamie, it's over. It didn't end well. But let's not do something to make it worse, okay? I want to talk about why Jake's videotape of us affected what we were doing. You mean how it affected what you were doing? It affected your choice, Jamie, not mine. You really believe that? Yes. And that's why you filed a, a complaint against me? I filed a complaint against you because you discriminated against me. All right. All right. Let's deal with this once and for all. Come here. You think that I chose Daryl over you because you're a woman. And because we slept together. Simply untrue. Then prove it. I wanted what was best for you, what was best for the hospital. And you never once let your ego or your reputation come into play. Is that what you want me to believe? Do you have any idea how hard this decision was for me? You bet I do. The choice between you and Daryl came down to some incidental particulars. It was a dead heat right down to the last moment. And what incidental particulars did Daryl have that I didn't? Do you really want me to do that? I want you to admit the real reason, bottom line, once and for all. See, you don't even know what you did. Because in your value system, you did nothing wrong. And in your system, I messed up. Not just mine. Look, I bet if it came down to a choice between me and Daryl, and you and I had never been involved, you would still go with the man. Kelsey, if he were the more qualified, yes. Listen, the only reason that this hurts as much as it does is because I loved you. But you take that away, and it's status quo all around. Women are never given the benefit of the doubt, and they are very rarely judged on the same scale as men. And that is a reality check you know nothing about. You are so wrong. As far back as I can remember, being a woman made a difference. Never know that. Because you were never a little girl who was told to aim lower just because she was a girl. I wanted to run for class president. They told me to try for secretary because that's what girls do. They start him young, Jamie. I had the best damn project in the science fair. But the teacher told me he didn't give me first place because he couldn't imagine that a girl like me would want a science scholarship. He really meant any girl at all. Kelsey, I know you have always felt like second best. But you've proven otherwise over and over again. That has to count for something. It does. But it doesn't make up for the, all the lost expectations. Your mother pressured you a lot, too, didn't she? All the time. A girl has to work twice as hard and be twice as smart and be twice as charming just to get what she deserves. Now, you remember that, Kelsey Harrison. It's not good enough that you're ranked in the top five in your class. 
It's not a guarantee that you get into medical school. There are four other people in the top five, and they are men. And they will all go to Harvard, Yale, and Princeton because they beat you out by two, three, four points. And because they're not like us. They are men. And they get the nod when push comes to shove. Don't you forget it, Kelsey. Don't you ever forget it. I guess my mother was right all along. Wasn't she, Jamie? If that curtain comes down on my head in the middle of Lady Killer, I'm going to quit. Okay. I'm going to walk okay, out on the road. I'll go you. sell encyclopedias but, on the road. I'm not... They've, they've got it under control. It's okay. Uh, honey, you know it's what? It's all right. It's all right. It's going to be fine. Yeah. Tell me something. Are you sort of regretting, your, you know, that you decided to have a concert here? No, no. It's, it's yeah. like the place is being run by the Keystone Cops. You know? Well, maybe the novenas will start to kick in. Yeah, well, have you looked outside? I mean, have you really looked outside? There's no, nobody what? there. Nobody's out there, Oh, that's honey. not true. 10, 15 that? people tops. Okay, well, the, door, the door's been open only a few minutes. you got to give it a little bit of time. A couple minutes. Yeah. All right. You're right. I mean, look at all these people. They're all working hard. Exactly, because they're they all believe working in you. That's why. You guys see all the people out there? What? That's not funny, Ryan. No, that no, is not fun. No, no he's serious. serious. About, about 200 people showed up in the last couple minutes. It's, That's don't look. Bingo right. must have gotten out. Hey, guys, guys. Bingo come on, must let's have get this out. show on the road. Uh, Mother Superior's worrying about curfew. You know what I'm <laughs> Mother Superior's worrying about curfew. Oh, that's... What's so funny? No, this is the funniest <laughs> concert so funny? ever put on the face of the earth. This is the funniest concert. I don't, but I like it's it. Well, let's go. Out. I'm ready. Yeah. Make him happy. Wait, 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 wait. you got to be introduced first. Oh, we got that covered. Is he ready? Do? Is he ready? Is he ready? He's been ready Ooh. for days. What, what are you guys doing? So just planning? watch, honey. Just watch and you'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> You think he can do this? Oh, yeah. Just give him a couple seconds, couple seconds. Testing? Testing? How y'all doing? I say, how y'all doing? That's much better. So, did you hear the one about the priest who walked into a bar? Just kidding, Mother S. <laughs> anyway, my name's Tommy Kent. I came here to introduce the man, the band, the legend you've all been waiting for. Well, maybe he's no legend yet, but he's a darn good singer and a really good friend. So here he is, ladies and gerbs. The man, the dude, he's back. Deep free. Yeah. One, two. <laughs> I'm going to take that as a good sign from the Lord above. What would you do? Listen, I want to thank you. I want to thank you guys for coming out tonight. It means a lot to me. And I would like to uh, thank Mother Superior and all of the lovely ladies for helping me get the show together tonight, even though we had a couple of problems. But I would especially like to thank each and every one of my fans who waited for such a long time for me to come back, and here I am. So thank you. <laughs> I... I want to say just one more thing, and then that'll be the uh, end of the stage banner, I promise. So is that okay? Just one, yeah. one more thing. A while ago, I wasn't the kind of person who really believed in much of anything until my family and uh, my new best friend right there, Tommy Kent, who introduced me tonight, <laughs> and the love of my life showed me how that was stupid.
And they were right. It's stupid. So this song goes out to everybody in this room who believes in something or someone. And uh, it especially goes out to the love of my life, Jenna. Brian, this is Dennis Wheeler. Look, uh, Olivia's family's stonewalling me for some reason. I, I want to find my child. I need your help, all right? So call me back. Bye. You won't need Ryan to find Olivia, Dennis. Liz. I don't like going against the wishes of my family, but I know what you're going through, and I want to help. Liz, you have no idea how much this means to me. I can't tell you where Olivia or the baby are. What? But you should know that your baby daughter is doing just fine. A girl? Her name is Sarah, and she's beautiful. I've seen her picture. Now, I can't tell Olivia or Russ what to do, but when you were in my home, I could see that you were desperate. Your knowing this won't betray their trust, and I know it will give you some peace of mind. Yeah. How's Olivia? Oh, well, she's fine. She had a difficult delivery, but David was with her. Olivia said he did very well. I wanted things to work out for you, Dennis. I didn't want Olivia to leave, and I never wanted her to lie about who Sarah's father really was. When was she born? August 29th. First babies very often are a little late. Now, please, don't ask me anything more. I can't tell you. <clears throat> it's, it's okay. Thank you. I understand. Thanks. But can you, can you tell Olivia... I can't that... tell Olivia anything. She's cut a lot of people out of her life, and I can't take a chance that she'll do it to me again. But I'll, uh, I'll encourage her to get in touch with you. Thank you. Don't tell Russ I was here. I don't think that Russ and I are going to be doing much talking ever again. Russ is a good man, and he's a good father. He's just never understood there's a right... Well, I like to think about your having a chance one day with your own daughter. Maybe then you'll understand why Russ made this choice. Above all, a father will protect his child. to prove yourself over and over again to be better because you're a woman and you expected me to behave just like all the rest of the men right no not at all i expected you to be different and the thing that hurt and makes me feel like i'm on a ferris wheel going around and around in circles over and over is that you the one that i expected to break the pattern Behave just like the rest of them. Well, so you really think I'm as bad as Professor Hunter? No. It sure sounds that way. He manipulated me. You just made up my mind for me, but you had no right to do that. I never thought I was doing anything to hurt you. I know. And in some way, that's a comfort. And in other ways? It makes me realize how impossible the situation is for us, Jamie. 
I want to do to prove to you that I am different from all the men who have let you down before. You can't prove that because it isn't true. Now, you once told me that my biggest drawback as a doctor was that I am too emotional. Well, after that, I was pretty sure that all the hopes and dreams that I had pinned on you were for naught. Oh, you didn't think I could handle the pressure, did you? No, it's Come not on, that I... Come on, say it. Tell me, here, in your heart of hearts, you didn't think that I could do that job as well as Daryl or any other man because women just aren't tough enough. No, I won't say it because it's ridiculous. It's not true. Oh, come on, Jamie. You think I'm as frail as Marley. I could break in half. Wait a minute. The reason I was attracted to you in the first place is because you are nothing like Marley. You're strong. You're independent. And emotional. Yes, a little. Am I so emotional that in light of the pressure from the newspaper article and the videotape and the hospital gossip, you were afraid that if you did pick me, I wouldn't be able to handle the fallout? No. This was your idea, Jamie, to come here and be completely honest. Kelsey, I thought I was being that. And answer this. On the day that you made your decision, why did you call Russ Matthews in Zurich? Why did you ask for the folder back from Iris with the name in it of the winner? Why did you change the name of the winner from me to Daryl? And be honest.
did you change my name to Daryl's at the last minute? You asked for this tonight. You have to answer me honestly. Or all your grand gestures, they mean nothing. I was worried. Kelsey, this whole situation was so ugly. And you're such a fine doctor just starting out. I didn't want this horrible experience to affect you or to taint the rest of your career in any way. So you made a decision to protect me? Would you have done the same thing to Daryl? No. Oh, my God. Elsie, I thought it would destroy us. I thought it would destroy you. I was wrong. 